Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to talk to you about the do's and don'ts of making comics. I've been making comics since I was about 14 years old, maybe even 13, so I've had a lot of time to make mistakes and try new things, and I found a couple of things that I feel like make every comic look a little more professional, so I wanted to share some of those tips and tricks with you guys. But first, a quick shout out to our sponsor, Amino. Amino is a mobile network of communities for every interest on the planet, from anime to drawing to K-pop. The Animation Station is a curated list of the best animation-related communities on Amino, where you can find both My Amino and the Arts and OCs community. And um, basically they are a little community for people who love making art and original characters. They actually asked me to make a official Lavender Town quiz on the Arts and OC Amino and I thought that that sounded really fun. So I have a very challenging quiz for you guys. And if you get a top score on it, um, you can actually get a shout out from me, like a little congratulations on my Twitter. So definitely check it out. I had a lot of fun making it. I tried to make sure that every single one had the answer answer somewhere in my videos um, so they're not you know it's not like guesswork if you like quizzes you should definitely give it a shot I want to see how you guys do um, I forgot my sister's name so I only got to question two but uh, if you guys can do better than me that would be really cool feel free to share your score with me and the link to the amino is in the description box Okay, so with all of my do this, not that videos, I have to remind that this is just my opinion and just what I've learned from doing comics for a while. So if you don't agree with me, that's totally fine. I'm not trying to tell you how to live. Um, I'm not the boss of you. But if you are looking for some advice, um, there are a few big pet peeves that I have that I think uh, trigger a lot of people into thinking that a comic might not be super professional. And the first one I want to talk about is a very easy change. Now, when I first started making comics, I did it with Manga Studio. Um, that is after I was, you know, doing it on paper. Once I got into digital, I did it on a program called Manga Studio. And it was really cool because it already had all these um, word bubbles and panels like that you could make automatically and I was like that's great I don't have to make them myself and it's you know it's gonna make things look so professional because they're like perfect shapes and stuff but in actuality I've discovered that it's a lot better to draw them out yourself um, you'll see what I mean in a second so I made this this word bubble with a the ellipse tool on Photoshop and um, you can see that it's perfectly uh, like the lines are, are, they're too perfect if you know what I mean. They're all the same weight all the way around and it starts to look like clip art a little bit. Um, there's a cheapness to it and it looks really awkward next to this illustration that I, you know, I intentionally made it even hatchier than I would usually do um, to show like the difference between a natural looking drawing and then the super artificial, super digital looking um, panel and word bubble. Now this can be a really clashy kind of thing and I find that the thicker the word bubble and the, the bigger the little triangle tail that is attached to it, the worse it looks. And I see a lot of this in beginner com beginner's comics, um, especially my own beginner comics. Uh, when I started out, like I said, this was a big issue for me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, what I've discovered is even though it takes like one more second or whatever. It's actually faster for me now to do it this way, but um, just drawing it out yourself is really important. And also your text, like if you have like Helvetica or like a standard text, like Times New Roman or anything like that, which is what I filled um, this, I think it was like Arial or something I filled the previous one with, um, you want to do your own font. This is a bigger problem and stumbling block for people. It's a more intermediate problem because a lot of people don't know that it's super easy to make your own font. But um, if you just go on myscriptfont.com or something like that, just type in make my own font or something and find find the one that's free. Um, you can download a little template and then you just write in A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of the stuff that you want in your font and then you can upload a font for free. So this is my font um, I drew out myself. I did it in the computer, but you can already see that it looks more natural with the drawing that I did. And it also has a bubble around it that looks more natural too. But I made another mistake in this one. And believe it or not, it's also about the word bubble. It's hard to imagine that there's so many mistakes and problems that can come out of word bubbles, but when you really think about it, they're quite important because they really decide how your your um, reader is reading the comic. 
A lot of people focus on the illustrations above all else, but the truth is the re readability of your comic and the clarity of it depends heavily on your word bubbles. So there's a few problems you can run into. The biggest, most frustrating one that I ran into for a super long time is drawing in the word bubble before I actually wrote in the text. I don't know why this is a habit of mine and I'm still trying to kick it, but you can see in the previous drawing that there were areas where the words are getting dangerously close to the panels and it's like not super comfortable to read. And then there's other parts of the bubble that have way too much space around them. So in order to avoid that, you want to make sure that you write in your text before you draw the bubble around it. Then you can make the bubble really perfect. This is another reason why you might not want to use a vectorized pre-made word bubble. Another problem you can run into though, um, if you draw in the text first, is that, um, and I'm talking like first before even you draw the picture in the panel that you want, is you can end up crushing your character into the corner and trying to draw around your word bubble, which you don't really want to be doing either. The trick to getting the perfect amount of space, um, where you have the right amount of text and everything else, is to do a super rough thumbnail knowing kind of what they're going to say. You don't need to know exactly, but knowing about how much they're going to say, like it's not a paragraph, it's a couple sentences or one sentence, and then do a quick rough draft um, where you're drawing out the picture and then you're drawing in the like approximate scratch text. You don't want it to be a beautiful picture. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just like a quick thumbnail. And then you'll probably leave about the right amount of space. And then before you ink, you want to draw in the text and then draw the word bubble around the text. So that should keep you from squishing your characters into the corner or having the word bubbles leave too much space where it's sort of floating away and the tail's getting really long and it's getting awkward. Um, you'll want it to be, you know, right near the character's head, not squashing up into them um, and giving them space to emote as they naturally would. Um, basically you want it to be about as far away as like a couple of their hands away from their head, I would say. There's always ex like um, reasons to do it differently. If you want the character to be saying something sort of wistfully or in a slow panel, you can make the word bubble farther away. But um, yeah, just in general, you don't want it to be too far away or too close. This next point is a pretty big deal, and this is a pretty advanced kind of thing to be thinking about. And to be clear, there's some comics that can pull this off and it's not a big deal. But in general, I would stay away from the talking heads uh, model of making your panels. And basically what that means is instead of showing a conversation where two heads are talking to each other in separate panels and they're just sort of, they look the same basically, but flipped with a different character where it's just like word bubble, head, then another head and a word bubble. That can be really quite um, dull, especially over a long period of time. Now, this is much more excusable in a strip style comic where it's like every single day and it's really focused on like wordplay and jokes. But I, even in those, I would stay away from it, um, like not want to do it every single time that you upload because again, I mean, comics are a visual medium and you're not really using it very much if you're just drawing the characters saying stuff. Like you could basically do the same, have the same effect just by like writing out a short story where it's like he said this and she said that you know um, you want to make sure that your comics are actually using the fact that they're comics so I would say try to pretend that you're making a film and make sure you're moving the camera so like in this example I'm going to show both of them in the first shot along with their background so that we have some sort of setting and we know who's going to be speaking and then I'm going to do a dramatic close-up on the secondary character so that we see the intensity and um, it just makes it more exciting looking basically. Um, and yeah, this is probably something I learned a lot from like manga and stuff. They're really good at moving the camera and getting up in the character's face and then backing off. This is less of a thing that I see in American comics, especially older ones like Watchmen and stuff like that. They stay pretty panned out most of the time. It would be like a lot of them would be all the top panel basically of, uh, of this one. But I would say moving the camera is almost always beneficial unless you're in a scene that's supposed to be really calm. It just adds a lot of energy and fun into it, and it can also show you more than the talking heads model can. I would also say, I mean, I didn't even change the angle of the camera, I literally just panned it out and then panned it in again, but in, um, in a lot of cases you'll want to move the camera's angles, so like, be shooting up at them, where you're seeing sort of forced perspective where their feet would look 
like bigger than they are and their head would look smaller and then vice versa where the camera's looking down on the characters all of that can be really beneficial so just try to be like critical um, when you're thinking about how you're going to compose a panel and try to make it exciting if it's supposed to be exciting <laughs> Next up is a comics fundamental, and it's maybe my biggest pet peeve of all time. It drives me absolutely crazy, and I don't know why this keeps happening, but even in professional comics, you see this sometimes, and that is where your illustration is drowning and being crushed by text boxes. This is a big problem with, like, um, a lot of comics that want you to take them very seriously uh, and it's basically where he, instead of showing what's happening they just like make these huge big text boxes where they're explaining what's happening and it's kind of weird because it, it sort of makes like a hybrid between a novel and a comic um, but I get really frustrated by it because in general it just makes it seem like the person wanted to make a book and not a comic um, you don't want to make a comic just because like just for no reason first of all because it's a lot more work than just writing like if you want to write you should definitely write um and comics are very slow and tedious so if you don't want to actually use the fact that it's a comic you probably shouldn't um and moreover it's really frustrating when you're trying to read a comic and you get slowed down by these huge dense text boxes it's really weird and I don't understand it. Um, there's a lot of comics that are quite popular that um, have these huge text boxes where they're just doing crazy exposition. Um, but personally, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> it's one of the things that drives me the most crazy about some people's comics. But I wouldn't even call this a beginner's mistake. This is more of just an opinion I have about, um, you know, what what the comics medium should be used for. But in general, I think a lot of professionals would agree that show don't tell is better. Um, if you can show what you're what you're saying in the text box or what you're say, you know, what the character's thinking to themselves, just show it instead. Um, if there's any like feasible way, you should probably do that, especially because like, you know, the less text you have, the more accessible it is to more people. Um, there's some comics that don't use text at all. And and that way, you know, everyone from every like every language can read your comic and um, there's like different manga that sometimes you can read even if you don't know Japanese because there's so little text. It just makes your whole story a lot more accessible and it really utilizes the medium more. Now there's nothing wrong with having words in your comic of course and you can be fun with the wordplay and everything but yeah just make sure you're not describing things that you could easily draw. And if you have a lot of text and you absolutely need it to be in your comic, just give it more panels for the, per the, the reader to read it. Um, you don't have to put it all in one panel. You can show different elements of the environment and stuff while you're showing all the text that you need to show. In general, I would say you should have no more than a couple sentences per panel, unless you have some special reason for it to be um, considerably more than that. Uh, I think that's a good rule of thumb in general. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this this video. I hope it was helpful. I really love making comics. I'm very passionate about them. And if you have a comic that you've made, um, feel free to talk about it in the the, the comment section because uh, I don't know. I'm really I really love comics and making comics, and I just want to hear what you guys are up to. Um, hopefully, some of you are making comics. Otherwise, this is not a very helpful video. And. Uh, just a quick note um, right at the end here. I'm going to be at SoccerCon um, coming up this like next weekend, basically. And I'm doing a little informal meetup. If you guys would like to meet me in person and uh, get an enamel pin from me, I have those um, really cute Lavender Town enamel pins that I'm going to be giving away um, there. So if you are interested in that and you're going to SoccerCon, um, keep your eyes peeled. Um, go to my Twitter if you want to know more about the uh, time and place. I'm thinking that is going to be outside the exhibitors hall um, at 2.30 on Saturday so if um, unless something changes you should probably check my Twitter to make sure that doesn't change um, uh, yeah that's where I'll be so yeah I hope to meet some of you guys there and um, I hope you guys have a great day big thanks to my patrons including Scott Peterson Weeb BB Dave Cato Cat Christy Stewart Painamel Elizabeth Alban Cal Pompon Okamore Matthew Kunke, Blep, Sergeant Pendulum, Siori, The Artsy Moose, Lena Christine, De Sweet 12, Aaron Sawicki, Super Pixel, Taka, Elizabeth Spooky, Lachlan MD, Mystic, Enzo Jobert, Yaboyas T, JJ Jade, Leblebleble, and Addie Visual. Yeah.